Um, I'll talk a little, a little bit about um, Eastside Boot Co-op. We are located in Minneapolis in a, a neighborhood of Minneapolis called Northeast. Um, we opened nine years ago. We're in our ninth year of operations. Uh, we started as a $2 million store. Uh, every year we've had at least double digit growth and we'll are on track for $8 million this year. Um, I'll do credit to Seward Co-op who had their 12 to 1 debt to equity during their expansion. Uh, we had negative e equity for our first three years, and when our equity went positive, um, our ratio was 400 to 1. <laughs> um, why I bring... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because we're still here, that's why. Um, <laughs> but I bring that up simply because the Northeast Network um, evolved in part because we were growing very quickly, as I said, uh, years of double-digit growth. But we did not have the finances to expand, as in a physical expansion. We have the location to expand. We have the desire to expand. But we certainly did not have the financial resources to. So um, we had um, uh, some strategic uh, planning sessions with our board. And one of the questions would be, um, what outside of sp physical expansion could we do? Um, and that is how we got to our our network. So um, yeah, we were, um, we were wondering, so, so we, at that retreat we asked these questions, you know, what makes um, our neighborhood vibrant? Um, and, then, and then how do we buy time for our financial growth? How do we maintain relevance in the neighborhood before we can grow, um, grow physically, with, um, have, have the finances to do that? There is an organization in North Minneapolis that does a monthly round table about issues uh, facing that neighborhood. And it was suggested that we try to do a, a roundtable of issues. We had some conversations about how that should be structured. Uh, and it became very important to us for that to be a dialogue, a dialogue with the participants who were there. That it wasn't information coming out from us. And primarily, that was our, um, our, our, our reason for doing these roundtables, is we needed to find out more about the community. While we were learning about the community, why not invite the community to come in and find out about each other? and to do that in a way that wasn't argumentative. There are some great jokes about Northeast Minneapolis, but frankly, there have been some very um, negative and argumentative community meetings, and uh, we're sort of known for that. So this was really important to us that it was gonna be about dialogue and it was gonna be respectful. Um, the format that we use, uh, another little community joke is that there is a meeting every night of the week in Northeast Minneapolis, so we chose a morning format. Uh, we start at 7.30 in the morning, there's a little welcome, we have a breakfast, we do an hour presentation, everybody can get to work by 9 o'clock. We've had three years of Northeast Networks now, every month we've had a, a ton of different topics. We have, uh, we've, we've developed a calendar, so people in Northeast Minneapolis know if you want to find out how the state legislative agenda will affect our neighborhood, come to the January meeting. If you want to hear from local successful business models, come to the November meeting. So we do have a, kind of a calendar built up there, but we have talked about as many issues that come up. Um, some of the results of that, I think maybe the one that I am most um, proud and interested in is that um, our Parks and Recs Department is developing a 20-year plan for the Upper Mississippi River, which is uh, adjacent to Northeast Minneapolis, and they chose Eastside Food Co-op as the community liaison for that plan. We've also had the opportunity to be um, funded by the University of Minnesota on a community health initiative with two uh, clinics in Northeast that are, um, that are community and, and low-income service, and we're looking at barriers uh, to healthy eating in our community. And again, these are things that I just don't think that um, grocery stores would normally be asked to participate in, but it's our role as a facilitator and a leader in a community that led to those, those specific projects. Um, so then we kind of look back at the original questions and, and, and think back after three years of that, you know, has it been a success? Well, I think definitely it's, it's forced us as an organization to look at our role as a servant leader within our community, to look at how we can serve the needs of the community, because you can't listen to three years' worth of issues without realizing that there's needs there. So it's better focused our response to needs in the community. Um, we do recognize the fact that we have a lot of diversity and that certainly that cultural diversity is not represented around the table every month. That's a challenge for us that we would like to um, address going forward. Um, and finally, I guess I would just say that 
um, we made a conscious decision not to use the networks as a promotion of the cooperative model. And people might ask why we made that decision. And, and it's kind of a thread that's run through these last couple of presentations today, um, specifically trust. We felt like our community, if we started bringing people in and then selling what we did, that we wouldn't build the kind of trust that we needed to build with these people who were not used to coming together. Um, could we do that now? I think we probably could. And we did have our uh, final network of 2012, our December network, was inviting all of our attendees, attendees to come and tell us what forums they would like to hear in the future. And a number of them indicated that they would like to hear forums about Eastside Food Co-op's mission and also about the cooperative model. But I think it was wise of us not to promote that immediately, but to just let our, um, our trust build up and let, let people get to know us on their terms. So that is the network.